Hey, it's Damon, the Drone Boss, and today we're gonna be diving into some huge news that could change the drone industry forever. We're gonna be discussing the removal of DJI's geofencing system. This happened January 13th, 2025. So before we get into the potential changes, let's understand what DJI's geofencing system actually is. Now, DJI used what they called GeoSystem, and this was a geospatial environment online system. This technology prevented drones from flying in restricted areas, like airports and heliports and military bases and government facilities, nuclear power plants, major sporting events, and other sensitive locations. Now, the system uses GPS and navigational satellites to help automatically help them prevent flights into restricted zones. So the reason it's called a geofence is it actually acted like an invisible fence preventing drones from flying into it, even if you tried. So this kept uneducated and uninformed pilots from getting into trouble. You know, you might remember the, the drone that crashed on the White House lawn back in 2015. Well, DJI developed this shortly after to prevent just those things from happening and keeping people from flying where they shouldn't without having the proper approval, and in this case, double approval. So why is this change such a big deal? Well, while geofencing provides crucial safety features, it's been a point of frustration for many drone pilots, and here's why. Number one, it can sometimes block legitimate authorized flights and requiring you to get additional individual unlocking of your drone via the serial number, which you know is just a second safety buffer to fly in restricted airspace, but also a big pain in the butt. Second, the system occasionally has false positives preventing you from flying in unrestricted areas that you should normally be able to fly in. Number three, updates can be slow reflecting temporary flight restrictions. As it was really impossible to update in real time because it only, the updates only happened with software and firmware updates. And some users found this just overly restrictive for their needs. Now there are pros and cons. Some of the pros are it, there's way more flexibility for professional operators now faster deployment in emergency situations, and you don't have to get all of the secondary approval and unlock your drones by serial number. We get reduced technical complications and greater user control, because this is further removing DJI's control and monitoring and responsibility, which hopefully for DJI, this will appeal to all those that want to ban DJI drones in America. Now the cons. Now 100% of the responsibility regardless whether they know it or not, falls on the drone pilot. And there are potential safety concerns. The big fear is that new unaware pilots fly into restricted airspace and cause an accident, like what happened in California with the LA fires. If you remember that DJI mini drone crashed into the wing of the Super Scooper firefighting plane, and it grounded the plane for several days which was terrible because LA only had two of them to fight the fires. And with much of the hydrants dry and low pressure, this was one of the only ways they had to get water because the great thing with these super scoopers is they can fly over the ocean, pick up water in a few seconds and then disperse it on the fires immediately. And because of a little $600 drone, it grounded a $30 million aircraft for a few days when it was needed most. Another con is that there's now need for better pilot education because now all of the responsibility falls on the drone pilot with no safety net. So in the case of the super scooper accident, that drone pilot now faces up to one year in prison, up to a $75,000 fine, plus being liable for all the damage he caused to a $30 million aircraft. Now, some are saying that remote ID for drones that weigh above 250 grams or eight ounces, that the geofencing was really kind of a redundant system. But if you think about it, it really isn't. Remote ID is kind of like a security camera to document what's already happened and then hopefully catch the people that committed the crime. Where geofencing is like having locked gates with security guards that prevent the crime from happening in the first place. Now, I get it. I mean, DJI I'm sure is tired of being attacked in the target and constantly trying to be banned. So I understand this move to remove the additional responsibility from them and put it on the pilots. I just pray that it doesn't set back the progress and the growth of the industry. Because the people, honestly, it's gonna hurt the most are the hobbyists. Us commercial operators, we're gonna comply with whatever upcoming regulations or what upcoming fines or fees we need to pay to keep our businesses going. But the hobbyists are gonna be the ones that are hurt the most. So, what should you know? Well, number one, be sure and follow the 
aviation laws and rules and FAA regulations. Maintain all your proper licensing, check airspace restrictions, and you'll need to do that manually, and be sure and get proper approval if you're gonna be flying in restricted airspace. And you can do that through any of the Lance apps, which you can find at Before You Fly. Always practice safe flying habits and err on the side of safety. And it's your responsibility now to stay informed with all the regulations and comply, or there are massive consequences. So if you're glad that DJI got rid of the geofencing, or you think DJI should bring it back, let me know in the comments and why. Please be sure to share this video to educate the drone pilots that are out there of these changes. And until next time, you take care and fly safe.